Kumusta ka naman? How's life? Or rather, how's your love life? Iniwan ka na ba? Nag-ghost o as a friend? Bakit ikaw pa? If it's not you, is it me? Ayaw mo bang mabuhay kung wala siya? Ang sakit naman, bes! Kaya't haling at makinig, makichika, at makiril to sa inyong Sabado Hugot ng Bayan. Kasama ang inyong kuyas next door, si na Kuya RV at Kuya RA. Dito sa Love Lines, Voice of the Heart. Ikaw, anong hugot mo sa buhay? Yes, good evening mga kahugot! Yon. <laughs> Wala yung ano ko dito eh, console ko eh. Anyways, magandang, magandang gabi po sa inyo lahat. And uh, welcome again to another episode ng Voice of the Heart. Long Lines, Voice of the Heart. Yan. And uh, just to remind you guys, ito po ay sa pakikipagtulungan ng Certified Voice Artist Program, Voice Acting Academy, Philippines Meta Voices, Talent Casting Agency, Dubbing Booth Company, Creative Sound Studios at ng Voice of the Youth Network. Yan. And ito ay natin sa inyo ng DWIC 882 at ng Creative Voices Production. Siyempre sa pakikipagtulungan niya na nag-iisang voice master ng Pilipinas. Walang iba kundi si Sir Pochola de Leon Gonzalez. Yan. Ako muli ang inyong voice friend, ang host ninyo ngayong gabing ito. Walang iba of course si Kuya RV. And uh, well, unfortunately, wala po ngayon ang aking partner. Hindi po natin siya kasama si Kuya RA since uh, siya po ay may ginagawang napaka-importanteng bagay. Pero siyempre, hindi naman po mabubuo ang love lines kung wala ang dalawang naggagandahang dalagita ng ating show gabi, every Saturday of course nandiyan si Ate Jerry and si Ate Sophie Hello Hi! Hi! Ako na sa naman <laughs> Nalilang po ayusin ko na Hi everyone! Anyway ah. ang tabayanan bukas araw ng linggo Abril at Tres ang muling pagsis Pagsasahim papawid ng himpilang may todong lakas, DWIZ 882, sa pagpapatuloy ng Pilipinas Debates 2022. Kapartner ang Comelec, Vote Pilipinas at CNN Philippines. Panibagong bugso ng paglalatag ng mga reforma, pagtugon sa mga malalaking usapin at pakikipagpalitan ng mga opinyon at saloobin hingil sa mga pambansang issue. Tutukan muli mula mismo sa mga tumatakbong Pangulo ng Pilipinas. Abangan, Pilipinas Debates 2022, The Turning Point. Bukas, linggo, Abril at 3, simula alas 7 ng gabi, makakasama natin si Drew Nasino, gayon din si na DWIZ Reporters, Jopel Peleño at Tina Nolasco at buong puwersa ng DWIC. Pilipinas Debates 2022, The Turning Point. Live sa Himpilang May Todong Lakas, DWIC 882, at mga kapatid na Himpilang DWIC at Home Radio sa iba't ibang panig ng bansa. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Grabe, napakahaba nun. Sabi ko, hindi ko kaya basahin to. <laughs> And of course, kasama natin sa studio, kasama din ang isang magandang dalagita dito. Sino siya? Ah, wala, wala ako, ako lang to. Wala ko guys, ako lang to. Anong po si uh, Ate Jari? Uh, ang yung Jolly Girl. Jari! Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jolly! So maraming maraming salamat for joining me this evening. no Kung dahil nga hindi makakasama sa atin si Kuya R.A. Kaya napaka swerte ko na hindi ako nag-iisa sa naol. Mm. Yeah, joke lang. Ayan. So, uh, last week, no, um, pinag-usapan natin ay, uh, uy, b- before pala yun, meron dito sa prompter ko nakalagay dito. Batiin lang natin ng happy, happy birthday si Attorney Lorna Kapunan. Laban para sa karapatan yan, host. And si Miss Ariam Sancho, ang ating DWIC writer. Yan, maraming maraming salamat hey, and happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Happy Sana birthday. masarap ko ang handa ninyo. Yes. <laughs> so, hi. Sana naman yung handa nakakarating din dito sa loob ng booth. Kung hindi man, pwede po namin daanan dyan sa likod. <laughs> Ayan, so last week, no, we were talking about depression, ladies. No? Pinag-usapan natin ang depression. Diyos ko, na, na nakausap natin si Corrainier dito and nasabi niya na Uh, well, siya ay isa, isang psychologist at nabanggit niya na uh, napakahalaga at napakaseryosong bagay pero hindi rin natin yung ipagkakaila 
na nanonormalize na kasi yung salitang depression. So last week, binigyan niya tayo ng specifics. Ano ba talaga or paano ba nating malalaman kung ang tao ay isang taong nade-depress na at ano ba ang mga kailangan nating gawin? Ngayon, simula nung Saturday na yun, kamusta naman yung mga araw ninyo? Kayo ba'y dumaan din sa pagninilay-nilay at uh, inassess nyo rin ang inyong mga sarili? Yes, feeling ko. Ang gris nung yes, uh, ano, yes. Kasi nga, di ba, unang tanong mo pa lang sa kanya nun, talaga naman bumugsi. Oo oh, oh, nga, grabe. Alam, <laughs> alam mo, nakalimutan ko yan, ha? Nung tinanong ko siya, o nga pala, ano, sabi ko, bus ko. Kala. Feeling ko, kailangan ko magpa-evaluate. <laughs> Ano, free Sarap naman, free lang. naman yan, no? Free? Oo. Oh, oh. We have organizations naman daw yan, ha? Para sa mga nakikinig at hindi nakahabo last week. For those who are undergoing depression or things na parang gusto nyong ayusin sa buhay ninyo, meron tayong mga uh, centers na pwedeng tumulong mm. sa inyo for free. So, yes. huwag nyong uh, alalahanin. So, yun nga, Ate Sophie, sinasabi mo kanina? Sabi ko, okay naman ako. Actually, this whole week um, is just that BC talaga. Tapos midterm week namin this week. I mean, this coming week. Ah, good luck. Good luck, no? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, ng malala. Ng <laughs> malala. <laughs> Kaya dahil napakabait ka para meron kang Cristo points. <laughs> Manifesting. <laughs> <laughs> dapat, dapat. Sabihin mo, i-claim mo, napapasa ka. Yan yung sinabi sa amin before, eh. Pag, ano, pag uh, nagre-review center kami, sinisigaw na, it's, it's raining license. Tapos sinisigaw kami, It's mine. Yeah, <laughs> ganun dapat. Kasi yung i-attract mo oh, daw. Yes, ano it's yung, true. Iisip mo. Ikaw naman natin, Jerry. How were you last week since the topic of this uh, depression? Mm-hmm. Ayun, bisibisihan. <laughs> bisibisihan? <laughs> parang, buti nga nakasurvive ako ngayong linggo na ito. Diyos ko, parang kanina pa nga lang. <laughs> pagod <laughs> ako, girl. Oh, hindi naman halatang pagod ako, di ba? Hindi naman mm-hmm. halatang <laughs> rumakit pa ako. <laughs> Lagi ka naman maganda. <laughs> Oo nga. Yes. Sa, parang uh, kahit pagod, kahit oh, puya, oh. kahit walang tulog, kahit yes. ano. Kahit wala kang jowa, ang mahalaga, ma- maganda ka. Yes. So. <laughs> Patay tayo mo. Ikaw naman, Kuya Arby. Mga kailangan, nung next week, ang usapan, oh. jowa. <laughs> ako, okay naman ako, since the topic of depression, sabi ko nga, everyone's going through uh, different uh, struggles, challenges, roadblocks sa buhay nila. No? We, we go through everything. It's just a matter of uh, really acknowledging and assessing yourself para, and trying to look at the better picture of uh, why things are happening. Sabi ko nga, and this is sabi ko sa isang show ko, no? um, things actually happen Not to us, but it happens for us. Yes. Hindi nangyayari sa atin ang mga bagay-bagay nang nangyayari para sa atin yung mga yan. So the sooner that we realize, eh, uh, the better things would be for us. Mm-hmm. You know? yes. So pansin nyo, I'm, I'm kind of speaking in yes. English right now. Uh, Hukining dollars. Yes. Nagawar mo piyarn. Oh my gosh. Anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to... No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm actually trying to catch up with my English accent because that uh, may kilala ang ganong host. Because you know, and like I said tonight, guys, no, uh, we have two very, very important guests for this evening. Mm-hmm. And if you would remember, probably two weeks ago, <clears throat> probably two weeks ago, <laughs> no, probably two weeks ago, eh. Napag-usapan na natin, napag-usapan na natin ang uh, Vowsy or three weeks ago yes, probably, uh, Vowsy or yes, Violence Against uh, Women and Children. Now, <clears throat> itong dalawang guest kasi natin would help us understand naman itong topic about alienation. No? Uh, sa, sa, Ganun pang invasion? Hindi naman. Hindi naman. <laughs> Outer space. Outer so, space naman. invasion ba ito? Hindi pa na tayo mo. <laughs> Pero don't worry, later on they will be telling us more about what this alienation is all about. Mm-hmm. Because nangyayari ito, it happens here in the Philippines. no? And don't worry guys, kasi nga, the, the, guests, uh, the guests that we have for this evening are actually offshore. Nasa ibang bansa sila. Yes. Okay, yes. they are actually offshore. Love Lines International. Yes. yes. My Worldwide. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, todong lakas. No? Uh-huh. And uh, they, they are actually located offshore. And later on, syempre, may mga naikinig naman tayo dyan sa radyo ngayon. Mga drivers natin na naikinig sa atin sa Facebook pages, uh, page natin. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't worry, nandito naman kami po ni Ate Sophie at Ate Jari yes. to help translate whatever po ang mapag-uusapan namin. Oh, oh, no. Because yes. nangyayari kasi ito eh. Mm-hmm. It happens. <clears throat> nangyayari kasi ito. Nangyayari na sa'yo? No. Okay. Wala pa siyang Junakis. Wala naman ako Junakis. Huwag ka magalala. <laughs> 
So, um, well, uh, nangyayari kasi ito sa atin, sa Pilipinas, and saka ka panood ko rin sa, Facebook, uh, sa YouTube mm-hmm. nung uh, nakakailang million subscribers na, kung alam niyo po yung sumbungan ng bayan. Yan. Ah, okay. Yung sumbungan ng bayan na, nakikita ko, laging nagagamit yan. I mean, it's very common for a family or probably a, a, a husband or wife na hindi nag, nag-settle mm-hmm. together. Uh, that they would normally abuse uh, yung parenting uh, authority nila doon mm-hmm. sa children just so that they could uh, get as much as they can from mm-hmm. the other partner or doon sa asawang lalaki or sa babae. Parang ganun. And common to sa Pilipinas. And for sure, you guys makaka-relate kayo. Yung mga nagiginigay, hindi kayo. Oh. Yung mga nagiginig, <laughs> yung mga makaka-relate kayo dyan. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce two of our guests for this evening. Wala si Kuya R.A., napalitan naman tayo ng dalawa. So, uh, two of our guests for this evening are actually a part of Split the Difference UK. We have here live on Zoom the legal head, attorney Arpu Kumar, and the CEO, Miss Sally Ann Buriz. Good evening. Uh, well, no, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, right? Hi. Good afternoon in you guys in the UK right now, right? Yes. 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 Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon, afternoon, attorney and uh, Miss Sally. <clears throat> How are you guys doing for this evening? Uh, this afternoon. We're very excited to be here with you. We're no, my gosh, that's a very strong English accent I'm hearing right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. Anyways, don't worry. I've actually uh, brought a dictionary here with me just in case that I'll be lost for words. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. So, um, Miss Sally and Attorney Arpu, this is uh, a usual question, by the way, that we ask our guest, uh, whoever attends our studio, uh, live uh, studio here in the DWIZ. We just want to know, how is your heart? <clears throat> uh, do you want me to go first? Um, sure. My heart is feeling really good. Oh, that's good. Feeling really good. And how about you, attorney Arpu? I'm delighted. Oh, you're delighted. That's a, that's a good sign. Yes. That is a good sign. So let's keep it that way. <laughs> yeah. So, attorney Arpu and uh, Miss Sally, as I've mentioned earlier to our Filipino uh, uh, viewers and listeners, that pro- uh, unless you guys speak in Tagalog, do you know any Filipino words? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. Don't worry. I, I brought here with me a, a, a litter of water just in case it would be hard for me to. No, just kidding. Maybe, so <clears throat> maybe you should have brought the handkerchief also <laughs> or a tissue <laughs> for your nosebleed. <laughs> no, don't worry. <clears throat> uh, as I was saying earlier, for our uh, for the sake of our listeners, Filipino listeners. Uh, if there might be any questions or answers that you might be giving us, we will be translating it in Filipino later on just so that, you know, they, they could catch up with everything. But for sure, majority of our listeners would understand as well, you know. So, yes, you guys are ready to go through this, right? So, uh, Miss Sally and uh, Attorney Arpu, because you guys are, are, are both under Split the Difference UK, right? Uh, can you tell us more about Split the Difference UK? What's your advocacy? What's this all about so that our listeners would actually have an idea? Okay, so um, I'll start. I am the founder of Split the Difference. Split the Difference is designed to support parity and equity in services for men and boys. Mm -hmm. And the reason men and boys don't have that is because legislation, guidance, policy, it doesn't recognise that they have needs. And unfortunately, as a result of that, um, we've after five years, um, we're going into year six now, actually, after six years research in the UK and internationally, we feel there's nothing else that we can do really, except for to be standing up and, and, and be counted and say this is wrong. So we do this in a way by advocating that laws are changed. So we don't deliver frontline services. We work with them in partnership with them. But the way that we work is to, to campaign that laws are changed. Nice. That's that's really nice. <clears throat> I, I love the advocacy of trying to give men uh, an, an equal uh, right. I mean, showing them the equal rights that they have. Because normally, I mean, especially here in the Philippines, you know, men doesn't know much about our rights as men. You know, because it, it, our, our our law are pretty much strong in terms of. Uh, magnifying the loss of the female uh, society you know that's that's the thing but do you do you guys have any satellite office here in the Philippines 
We we are looking to um, set up, we've got partnerships that we work with all over the world, but mm -hmm. we're looking to set up a committee in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is that we work in partnership with that committee then to, to ask legislation to make changes. Um, unfortunately, men don't understand that they don't have equality until they're faced with things like family court, um, divorce, uh, maybe domestic abuse or some form of abuse. And then they realize that services are not available to them as they are, unfortunately, for women and girls. Mm -hmm. So, that yes. That's a good thing to know because, again, as I've mentioned, I mean, just to translate in Tagalog or in Filipino, uh, maganda to kasi yung mga lalaki here in the Philippines, hindi nila alam nga talaga na mm -hmm. nasa disadvantage tayo in terms yes. of the laws that we have. <clears throat> Actually, there's a um, house bill already for men. Mm -hmm. House Bill 4888, like for the anti-domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Well, if it, in, uh, it will be passed as a law, then it will kind of like an... Um, support to the <laughs> present uh, law for the violence against women and children. Mm -hmm. And it's good because, again, sabi ko nga kanina na lalo nga hindi nagiging balance or the, the men doesn't know that mm -hmm. they have this rights unless that they are actually faced in a certain situation that in court in court or they're actually pressed against the wall that mm -hmm. uh, our men doesn't know our rights primarily. Kaya, Maybe because we do not have divorce here. That's another thing yes. as well, yes. Kaya hindi rin natin na entertain That's why we don't entertain much or try mm -hmm. to know more mm -hmm. about the laws. I mean, actually, who who knows our our rights and our actually laws here in the Philippines unless you are actually faced to know yes. one, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, that's that's a problem. So, I, I we really admire this advocacy of uh, Split the Difference UK and it's glad to know that... Um, They're going to have a comedy here in yes, the Philippines soon. Eh? Soon, soon. And that's, that's really something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Miss Ali or uh, Attorney Arpu, I mean, whoever can answer this, because uh, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> you guys are here right now with us to explain uh, what alienation is all about, what, what what's really going on in, in this uh, topic. Uh, can anyone, you know, Anyone elaborate. of you tell us more, elaborate what, what this alienation was all about? Parental alienation. <laughs> Parental alienation, to be exact, I'm sorry. It's okay. Arthur, would you like to answer this one? Yeah, Mr. Thorny, Arthur. Arthur. We may have a connection issue. Um, I'm not seeing her at the moment on the camera, so there oh. may be an, an issue. So maybe I should um, for answer sure. this for you. Okay, so alienation comes in many formats. Um, first of all, in a relationship, when 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 we go into a relationship and we look for love and we, we've got all these dreams, we build that relationship based on hopes, based on being able to, um, I don't know, work together on those dreams. And you'll 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 be guided by I'm going to get married, I'm going to have children, I'm going to buy a car, I'm going to develop my work, I'm going to become a great human being with lots of kids around me and grandchildren. And when a relationship breaks down, the narrative of that becomes hurt and harmed by lots of sorrow, sadness. It's like mourning the death of something or someone. You know, we when we when we lose a parent or, you know, a child, God forbid, mm -hmm. We mourn that, and a relationship is exactly the same. And unfortunately for a lot of people, the children become the central point of that relationship and that breakdown, and there becomes this battle about... For men, we notice that, and we're looking at some, doing some research on this, but for men, we notice when they start to understand that the law is not favouring them, what happens is they... they go on the defensive so they're fearful you know so arguments start about seeing children with the women they're worried that the men are not going to carry on supporting them so there's lots of uneasiness around that and and the alienation can start within that family unit by simply sharing the arguments with children now when that goes into a court setting there are certain legislation in place for for women that is not there the same for men that allows women to take the first steps into court and be protected by that court system. So, for example, there's funding available through court systems for women who are experiencing domestic abuse, and there's services around that court system that will help a woman who is experiencing mm -hmm. domestic abuse. So 
they are pushed into an environment where there's lots of people there. There's often financial backing there. They they can work through that system and and pretty much the system itself pulls the children away from the father. Now, for a father, unfortunately, this system helps with with um we know there are absolutely massive amount of false allegations that are put within this system. So often dads are in a situation where they've been arrested, they've been told they can't go near, there's injunctions placed upon them, and and the system itself will then contribute to the alienation. Mm-hmm. We have we've we've looked at um our our directive is to face the United Nations. And we've looked at over 15 countries and their legislation within them. Not in one country was the legislation, the guidance, or the services around the breakup of families anywhere fair for a man or his children. And and so you go from being a, a family that's in, you know, they, they're upset. They're going through an awful thing. They're having to let go of their hopes and their dreams. The grandparents are involved. Cousins are involved. Everybody's involved in this. There's money involved, houses, cars. So the family are going through that. But then you've got an extended service, a family court service, or all of the services around that that are also alienating children from from their parents. Um, And it becomes a quagmire. Uh, and, And children often... They can go, I mean, the minimum time a child will go through a family court process is between 9 and 18 months. Some families go through this process until the children are adults, and sometimes that's 12, 13 years. And and that in itself is criminal. It's something that should never happen. Sorry, Arthur. Uh, well, as Sally rightly said about uh, the imbalance in the legislation so far, you know, men and boys are concerned. Starting from the time a, a boy is born to the time he becomes a parent and then, you know, the custody battles and all the stuff that a person might go through uh, when he or she is placed in unfortunate circumstances. Uh, our research through Split the Difference has shown us that um there is not even a single piece of legislation that will look into exclusive needs of men and boys like we have uh, uh, women and girls rights taken care of, whether it is a convention on uh, elimination of uh, uh, domestic violence, whether it is Istanbul Convention, which I'm sure not many um, audience uh, be familiar with. We can talk on Istanbul Convention because it has a it has a massive impact on how global policies that support women's and girls' rights are being shaped up and uh, how politicians across the globe are pushing forward such policies. So um, I, I have been reading about Philippines and um, the, the politics in that country, uh, you know, for, for a few ta- a month, a few weeks now. So what I found is it's no different than India, no different than England, no different than any other place where there are massive pieces of legislation covering women, protecting them from domestic abuse and violence, and also ensuring that women as victims are taken care of, leaving men as you know, uh, victims. And the only narrative which is most popular and most famous, which is, I think, uh, a global narrative now, is that men are perpetrators and women are victims. Other day, um, uh, uh, Zen, uh, who represents Men Courage Philippines, uh, I and Zen, we are friends and we've been talking about, um, you know, certain flexes that we see uh, all across the Wales, across the UK. And uh, she was telling me about what she sees in Philippines, especially around Manila. She says there are so many flexes which are, you know, uh, directly pointing out that men are preparing and women are victims. So I did some research on legislation and I found out in 2019, the the Anti-Violence Against Women and Their Children Act of 2004 was proposed with an amendment in Philippine Parliament uh, whereby they wanted to add 
men as victims as well so that men who suffer from domestic abuse and violence are also covered uh, by the legislation because as the name suggests um, in philippines it only covers uh, women and uh, children. children so then it made me go into the family code uh, which is um, you know uh, which is in place in philippines to ensure that you know custodial battles are taken uh, care of and how women and children's rights are protected it's a massive piece of legislation spanning over 200 uh, plus articles and all i could see was there is nothing that actually covers a man so far of the custodial battles are concerned a man in all cases we can go deep into that as we progress in the show but all i could find uh, in a summary i can say that uh, uh, a man has to prove his worth to be the father of yes. the child having custody of the child um uh, in the court uh, if he wants to have the physical custody of the child yes. otherwise law in philippines explicitly guarantees that um um a mother has to have the custody of the child so i can look at the international pieces of legislation compare it with india compare it with uk and then come back to philippines as we progress in the show but it it is how it is there is this imbalance in law for men and uh, boys mm-hmm. as compared to women and girls and it is unfortunate that's where split the difference that's where men courage philippines these uh, organizations come forward and we thank you for having us here today yes and we we really really thank you uh for um you know finding the time i know that this is part of your advocacy but we really appreciate you uh joining us for this after this afternoon in your place uh to to explain further what a parental alienation and split the difference uk actually does for mm-hmm. for uh for so many years now And um it's true the tone of man um no one is above the law right no one's above the law and in Filipino we say it walang nakahihigit sa batas ng Pilipinas mm-hmm. no however because of how the law was written way back before uh majority i mean at least it's it's somewhat biased in terms of uh the custody of the child mm-hmm. that normally it actually goes to the the, the mother And yes. men would until actually until seven years seven. until seven years old. Yes. yes, and men should actually fight for their right mm-hmm. to at least claim custody of their child. Or yun nga kailang paglaban mo pa. Yes, and it's really like ch- what Attorney Arpukumar said: the man has to prove the, mm-hmm. his worth of uh, taking care of the child. When in fact, both of them are actually just yes. the parents of the child, and they mm-hmm. both of them are actually human beings. Mm-hmm. So what makes a woman not, not to demean the mm-hmm. girls? No, but mm-hmm. what? what difference uh, what uh differs men from women when in fact they are just both the parents of the child that's the yes. point there's an imbalance and imbalances in legislative uh, um laws, laws uh, yeah. that that are protecting women and uh this is something that i've also you know had a discussion with with one of my friend uh, one of my friends i'm sorry <laughs> um uh, cuz Normally when you guys get married, you know, you guys are happy and everything. We we all thought we all think that just getting married everything's going to be happy. Happily ever after. That's what's what we we normally say, right? But apparently when when we go through this kind of uh part of the relationship where you need to go through annulment or divorce, mm-hmm. everything just gets so dirty when it, it comes to court, yes. you know. And complicated. Complicated and yes. challenging, at, challenging for the both parties also. And always 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 all the time the child would always be the victim here you know and that, that's something that you know uh, probably the philippines should also uh, check on uh, because earlier you yes. mentioned that they are actually reforming yeah, yeah. something right uh-huh. with the house bill and, and the house they're bill. really waiting for it, for it to be passed as a law Okay. And also like what Attorney Arpokumar said it's very important for politicians to know about this kind of issues especially now it is election in the Philippines so you might as well take down note of this mm-hmm. that men are having not ha- having no equality mm-hmm. at all. Tagalogin let me just uh, translate that in Filipino <laughs> for other listeners na kailangan talaga natin na uh, ma- maasiayos yung batas na yon kasi uh, laging pabor na lang sa girls, mm-hmm. sa women yung law na meron tayo when in fact 
dapat men and women should share the same rights yeah. in terms of the custody of the child but mm-hmm. most of the time nga napupunta lagi or mas mas pabor mm-hmm. sa babae simply because of the law kung how mm-hmm. how it was created way back before no sabi nga nila a bad spouse is not a bad parent so yes naka, nagkaroon man ng problema sa relasyon ninyo it doesn't mean na hindi kayo mabuting magulang yeah. and there's a stereotyping ha like sabi nga ulit ni attorney mm-hmm. Arpu of all the articles that uh, she saw sa vow scene natin, is walang victim na, na men. Mm-hmm. Puro women. Mm-hmm. There's Why? a stereotype because mm-hmm. it's very popular and famous na women lagi ang victim. Mm-hmm. When in fact, there are men out there that are experiencing abuse. Yes. Mm-hmm. Domestic abuse. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. only women. And it has been rising recently. I mean, the numbers of men who are actually being mm-hmm. abused, probably because women or, again, uh, other women take advantage of the law that mm-hmm. they know yes. about the and covers have, and protects them, yes. right? Kampante. Yes. Uh-oh. So, um, attorney Arpu, if I may ask, um, what are the common uh, cases that you've probably handled uh, regarding this parental alienation? What are the common cases that you have seen so far? Uh, the common cases uh, pertain to like men fighting for the custody of their children because uh, under family law, generally what happens is that like um, under family court, uh, section 213 of Filipinian law. We have this provision um, which is a default setting in family law in Philippines that a child under the seven years of age um, will be uh, residing with his mother. And the okay. uh, law is pretty much direct in case of illegitimate children in Philippines, mm-hmm. which means that if children are born out of wedlock, then the the, the custody of that uh, illegitimate child. I uh, I do not even feel like using this term, yeah. but <laughs> you know, and that's legal, legal term we term, use yeah, when we, term. yeah, yeah. So the custody of those illegitimate children will be with the mother mm-hmm. until and unless, until and unless the father of the child proves serious lapses uh, in the health of that lady, uh, say like uh, substance abuse, drug addiction, infidelity or anything. I mean, it has to be proved beyond reasonable doubt by the man that the woman is unfit to take care of the child. Otherwise, uh, this is one of those uh, stringent positions um, under international law. When I do a comparative study of uh, UK, Scotland, India, uh, some African countries, uh, that Filipinian law is quite strict in the sense that uh, uh, generally a custody of a seven-year-old child or below that age will be with the mother. Mm-hmm. And there is second position where it says that uh, any child who is seven years plus, which is above the age of seven years, that child's views will be taken in consideration as to where he wants to live. Like, you know, which parent he wants to live with. Mm -hmm. So now with regards to the specific question of parental alienation, I would just like to mention there is one strain which is very common across all countries and um, pertaining to family law. This default setting of best interest of child is more inclined to giving custody of the child to women everywhere, whether it is India, whether it is um, UK or Wales or Scotland, these are basically devolved administrations which form the part of uh, United Kingdom. So um, all the cases show this as a common factor that anywhere where a father wants custody of his children, he has to prove in the family court when he is part of the custody battle that he is capable of looking after his or his children as a father. And then there is law in place. For example, uh, the, the legislations in Philippines have different names and in London, they're different everywhere you see. But the point is, let's say family law, then domestic violence uh, and abuse legislations. All these legislations with certain, uh, you know, sections guarantee that the custody of the child will actually be with the mother. The father will only act as a banking, mm-hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> or a support, a support, financial support. Yes. yes. 
Yeah. So it's like you know the father will act like a money bank because mm-hmm. he has to give custody to, uh, to the mother. Now he has to give maintenance to the wife because they've been married. You know, yes. then double punishment will be on top of paying maintenance to the wife minus custody of the child. The the parent, which is father, he will have to pay for the maintenance of the children as well. Now the catch is the court says you are the father. considering fairness of law we give you rights which are visitation rights you have access to see your children or have an arrangement to have your children say like on the weekends depending upon the order court court has made but you know in execution i always say law is different in theory mm-hmm. and yes. in legislation mm-hmm. there i mean in practice there is there is no synchronization law is totally different when you read it when you practice it it's totally different so in my practice i have seen that whether it was in india whether through to split that we are doing uh, advocacy to protect the rights of fathers struggling with you know custody battles at the moment so they have no access to their children i have received personal messages on twitter asking uh, my help you know from alienated fathers i've received those messages they want to get some help from split the difference that we enable even one call you know one call with their estranged children because mothers they manipulate children and parents especially fathers and men and boys they don't realize that their rights are being violated a man will focus on providing for his family a man will focus on taking care of the best interests of his child more than the court or the wife would and in some cases i have personally seen men will just move away from the matrimonial house leaving it to the discretion of the wife and the children to take care of it and then he becomes so alienated in this process from his children that there is practically no contact no emotional physical or uh, any communication contact between the father and the child uh, sally wants to add on to what i'm already saying yes, sally. so yeah <laughs> Yeah, if you don't mind, because one of the things that we notice is there's no validation in men parenting their children, yes. and there's there's a lack of understanding on the psychology. Actually, what happens to men and women when they become parents, physically, mentally, and emotionally? What we know now is that women, the the voice of the woman is, I cha- I carry my child, my body changes, the hormone changes, everything changes about who I am. but what we know through science now through neuroscience through over 10 years of research done by psychologists both in o- oxford and in the us that as soon as a man finds out he is going to become a parent the biology within him changes his testosterone levels drop the neural pathways in his brain completely change he becomes more sensitive his hearing becomes more sensitive he becomes more sensitive and tuned into empathic needs um the physical needs of of children and and the environment around him one of the things that, uh, that blew my mind when i um actually read this research was that they did tests where they put a family with a two week old child into a setting they recorded the the sounds the noises the cries of the child they sat mum and dad on a seat and they said amongst 10 children choose your child's cry On every occasion mums and dads were able to spot their own babies crying okay there was no fault default on that mm-hmm. now the interesting thing about this is if a man is going to decide to foster children has never fostered a child before never had a child before the same physical responses will happen in his body as they will with a woman the same with adoption So there's a fallacy out in the world that men and women are completely different and women are the only ones that can tune into their children's desires. That simply isn't true, okay? It is absolutely equal. The only difference between a a a, a father and a mother is that when the father's height when the father as he develops through the pregnancy, his he has a heightened um uh, ability to protect There is two separate parts of the brains that develop. In the woman it's the middle of the brain that develops when she's pregnant. In the man it's the frontal part of the brain, which is the fight and flight zone. So 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 men when when we've got something that scares us, fears us, what we need to protect, it sits in that frontal part of the brain and that's the part of the brain 
that develops when a man's testosterone levels drop. So that these systems within us say that we can equally parent, we can equally satisfy our children's needs. The big thing that with a woman, a woman will nurture, um, there's lots of benefits to being mum. There's a reason why a child, when it falls and it cries, it's upset, will go to mum first. When it wants to play rough and tumble, get wet and go out in the mud and do all those crazy things, they naturally gra- gravitate to dad because dad teaches children how to negotiate risk and dad teaches children how to get over those things when they fall down. Dad teaches children courage, okay? Those two relationships are very much needed within a child's upbringing and life. Otherwise, they don't develop. They don't develop in the way that they can. So so the courts don't allow for that. Law doesn't allow for that. That is unfound. There's no challenge to this biology. It, it's what happens. And we need to be aware that women need to be aware. Women don't understand this stuff. It's not, it's not taught to anybody. A mother is groomed into believing she's the only thing that can protect her child, that men don't know how to answer those needs the same way that she does. That simply isn't true. You know, so understanding, a woman understanding that her husband is very well equipped to look after a child's needs. You know, his body's gone through exactly the same changes that she has. And a man understanding that he needs to be present because he matters. You know, he matters and he needs to know that. So don't give up on that child. Don't think that you, you're not significant. Without you, they have no courage to stand up once they've fallen down. They have no courage to deal with a girlfriend that's let them down when they're 14. You know, they lose this element. This is why there are more men that are homeless. Mm-hmm. In 191 countries across the world, the suicide rates for men and boys are higher. The youngest documented case is six years old. There's a reason for that. There's a lack of understanding of services that know what men and boys need and we need to bring that balance you know we need to get it back right where both of us are validated both men and women validated in our children's lives we're both accepted as being important in that otherwise our children are more likely to go into drug and alcohol more into, more likely to go into crime they were more likely to fail in education they're more likely to die early you know, the ACEs, the advert child experiences where where there's only one parent in place means that a child's actual physical life is more likely, to, they're more likely to die 10 years earlier. These things are real, you know, and, and what Arpu and I and lots of other people are trying to do now all over the world, there's lots of women involved in, in standing up for men and boys. We are saying, how can we ask for these things unless we're willing to stand by our men and boys and expect the same thing for them, you know? So so validating a man's role within his children's lives, understanding that without him, our children are not going to thrive, and women understanding that their dads can look after them equally the same. You don't have to fight. You don't have to be the one person to protect. You know, these men are very well equipped. Ex-husband, you can hate him till the day he... He dies. That's okay, but your children need him. Your children need him, and that's all there is to it. You chose him. Get over it. Live with it. You might not like him now, but he's very much, very much needed within your child's life. So suck it up. Let him in the children's life and work with him. And that's kind of our message. And yes. the, 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 well, the, the, the second uh, Sally's opinion, you know, I'm reminded of a judgment I read while I was in my university doing my LLM course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's this, this judgment. I don't remember the name of the judge uh, right now, but there's this judgment from U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, you know, uh, it was a case in 2005, I think. And uh, the judge actually admonished both the parents. It was a family family law case, so two people fighting for the custody of the child. And uh, the judge actually admonished both of them, saying that this child represents each one's half, and then it becomes whole, you know, which is like what Sally said about the biology, uh, you know, of the child and the biological changes a man and a woman go through when they become parents or when they are in the process of becoming parents. Mm -hmm. So uh, the judge saying that they are two halves, you know, from you to make this one. And if you say your mother is bad, 
you are actually saying the half that he has gotten from his mother that half in that mother is bad just like that half in that father is bad you know if you say the father of the child is bad so basically when you two you you two created a union to give rise to this child then you know now that you are in this unfortunate situation where you are fighting for the custody of the child it's like uh, to me you know fighting for something which is not yours because the child will become an adult and he will have his own mind he will have his own choices in life and he will be able to decide on his own uh, in his own mind whether his mother was right or his father was right now i i always keep telling and we always keep promoting this through split the difference that both parents are needed your mother could give you nourishment care love and affection that you can have from mother father gives you the same but the discipline the grooming whatever we miss in this gender which is a woman they that other gender is there to complement it that is why nature created a man and a woman at first place now that a man and a woman give rise to a child it becomes important for all the men out there to understand that it's not always you know highlighting your relationship with your mother that you should do culturally as well in india there are so many things about mother you can talk and lessly and hear i think it is i've been here in uk for last 3 uh, years now and it it's the same here and all my interactions with people from this part of the globe where we are live from at the moment also shows me the similar culture there will be so many things around mothers day around you know all the things related to mums in songs in poetry in feelings and everything very very few things regards fathers so as men the first step to realization of your own rights as fathers it starts from the fact that validate yourself just like sally said so if you validate yourself as fathers that no this is my child i can look after my child and i have my child's best interests in in my mind i can be in the court of law and say that i can take care of my child so maybe the court can grant you you know you i would always say my clients you know while i was practicing as a as an attorney in india i would always say my clients that please try to not to mudsling the other party what you want for yourself from the court you tell about those things and that's what i'm learning uh, you know from my uh, experiences with uh, uh, sally and boris she's a balanced person she has a background in therapy the the dialogue the narrative which split is trying to push ahead is that we don't want to condemn women we don't want to condemn mothers we want no nothing against anyone all we want is equality and we are filling the gap where you know we see inequalities for men and boys and where we see inequalities for men and boys for example last year we actually started a campaign which is a suicide prevention campaign and as part of the launch of suicide prevention campaign which was part of mental health awareness uh, month which is october the uh, which is uh, you know starting from september the 10th and then we go to international suicide prevention day Uh, you know towards october 10th so we had this one month long campaign in 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 uk and as part of that campaign i tried looking at statistical data from world health organization i was shocked beyond my imagination to find how many men in asia how many men in europe and americas commit suicide against women and the cause when i was asked by sally to find out the causes the causes were family disputes and um, you know litigation so what are family disputes parental alienation is one of them discord with your wife is another one and other one could be like if you say that men are unemployed and they can commit suicide because of their unemployment that's not true the biggest possible reason which who in itself assigns to the highest male rates of suicides or highest rate of suicides amongst men in asia specifically is due to family um 
uh, discord uh -huh. and matrimonial disputes. So what this brings us to uh, conclude when we think, uh, like I can think as a human rights lawyer or, or as, a, as a professional just working in family court systems across the globe, all I feel and all I think is men need to validate themselves. This is more important. As far as the legal side of this is concerned, at Split the Difference, we are trying to actually uh, push forth an agenda with the United Nations where, like we have UN men, you know, all the policies come from there and they come down to all the countries because we all are United Nations member countries. So we are trying to ensure that if we have support from amazing people like you and have more and more outreach to audience who can go to Split the Difference website, sign a petition, which is a petition put forth by UN, by Split the Difference to push for UN men. If people can today go to www.split small hyphen the small hyphen difference.com and check our petition, which pushes forth to United Nations that it should give us a UN men just like we have UN women. The, the purpose of having this uh, program, you know, and reaching out to all our fellow uh, brothers and sisters in Philippines is achieved. For me, for Sally, for Split the Difference, we all want to give back to society where we see our fathers, sisters, brothers, and all those amazing men that make our lives beautiful as being, you know, served equally by the law. Because you see, I, uh, it's a very personal thing for me to share on this platform but i lost my father uh, almost two years ago mm -hmm. and in a month's time in less than a month's time is his uh, third death anniversary that we will be remembering him at and i do miss my father i do miss my bond with him that nourished me to become where you see me today so I do not say that I discredit what my mom did for me or what all ladies who are motherly figures for me, including Sally Ann, has done for me. But I do remember what my father has taught me, how I have become where I am. But then God does not take away from you anything until he wishes to replace it. Uh, with, you know, something as good or even more beautiful. So here it was, I got married. I got married into an amazing family where I have a father-in-law who is just as my father was. And then I see my father's reflections in all those people uh, whom I'm working with, whether it is Sally herself or whether there are some amazing people who just keep giving me reflections of what my father used to be like, what were his work, work ethics. So when as an alienated child, I lost my father to death, but as an alienated child, when you grow in life, you can never ever reconcile with that emotional trauma where your mother fed you against your father. And there are so many children, uh, you know, who have grown into adults and they have lived experience of parental alienation and they definitely want to search for their fathers and speak to them. So I would I would encourage all men who are listening to us today, if you are in such a situation, please try to create small videos, 30 second videos, or put some things on social media so that your children know that you are also waiting for them to come back to their lives. Mm -hmm. You also want to establish that emotional connection, which has been distorted due to so many reasons, first and foremost being manipulation by their mother themselves. So I would also request all the mothers, all the women, like Sally said, that you, no matter what you face between husband and wife, but once you decide to become parents, it's not by accident. Even if it is by accident, accept it and do not let your child feed on the hatred that you have for your husband, that he develops that for his father. Because his relationship to his father is different from what you have with him as your husband. So this is a quite technical point that I ended up making, but I hope my message is clear. So yeah, for thank sure. you for that. Yes. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And uh, uh, <coughs> a few things that I've actually captured earlier, let, let me just translate that in Filipino here. <laughs> Sinasabi kasi dito is, 
uh, ano nga ba yun? Dejo. <laughs> ang sinasabi kasi dito is, ang uh, sinasabi ni attorney uh, Arpu okay. here is, <coughs> Uh, for fathers, para sa mga tatay, you know, for fathers, uh, try as much as possible or gawin mo lahat ng pwede mong gawin to get in touch with a child. Knowing that <coughs> custody normally stays with the mother for seven years, uh, what would you do as a father in those seven years? Mm-hmm. Make Kasi, sure you are involved. You make sure that you are involved. Because again, you don't want that your child will feel alienated kasi wala siya or she he or she doesn't have that father figure. And that's really important. Earlier, uh, Miss Sally actually mentioned, uh, or Miss Sally, uh, I believe Miss Sally mentioned earlier about the biological change that's happening with men mm-hmm. uh, is also as equivalent as the biological change that's happening with women. Mm-hmm. Diba? Yes. yes, marahil ng babae, pinagdadala niya yan for nine months, mm-hmm. yung bata. Pero men, has also biological changes happening in them yeah. na minsan hindi sila nakakatulog, mm-hmm. uh, yung levels ng testosterone nila nag-iiba at nagiging Saka, responsive sila. Nagiging develop daw yung frontal lobe yes. ng mga lalaki once na nalaman nila na parent na sila. Yes, yeah, so meaning uh, the changes that these women normally claims are also happening. Maybe not at the same rate, yes. probably not at the same physical, uh, physiological change. I would just like to add, mm-hmm. men do not have baby bumps like yes, we have. Yes, yes. You, <laughs> you still, you can assert that you are becoming a father. So yes. validate, you know what, oh, I think the emotional difficulty with men is, they are very less in their expressions. So, you know, once men start becoming more expressive, they will become more assertive in their emotions. That's where men fail, you know, where women succeed is where men fail. So, women succeed with expression. They could be expressing what they are feeling. Men do not express it as much. So, even if you don't have a baby bump, you don't have to copy your wife, but you still can be an equivalent participant, an equal participant in that process where you show your excitement about becoming a father as much as a woman is showing excitement to when she is ready to become a mother, you know. So it's about men taking the lead in showing that I am a proud father. I am just not a care provider from backstage. You know, I am leading my child's life from the front. So this is what men needs to be uh, assertive about, mm-hmm. I, I think. So we can add this. So that people can understand that as men, we need to be assertive. As husbands, we need to be assertive towards our wives in telling them that this is my child too. So the seven-year, uh, the, the seven-year-old legislation, I would just like to mention there is a international convention which protects and safeguards the rights of the child, which is called the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. Till date, it is one of the most uh, ratified and signed piece of legislation all over the globe. But still, the Article 1 of this convention says that any person who is below the age of 18 years, you know, mm-hmm. uh, is considered a child. But different countries have different uh, ages of majority. So in Philippines, when it comes to family and custodial battles, they, they, they consider the seven years bar you know and any child who is more than seven years old can actually tell the court through the process of judicial interview in philippines that he or she wants to be with his mother or father now the point is when this is put into practice this is a family code provision under uh, i think sections 213 that you know a child can tell about his um uh, preference of the parent he or she wants to stay with under Filipinian law. So I think all the attorneys, you know, they are, that are representing men, they must be able to uh, create an environment for a child's voice to be heard in the court in the manner that the other party's counsel, which is the, the mother's counsel, he doesn't try to break into the law in a way proving that the man is incapable just because the law by default guarantees that the child could stay with his mother and it is in his best interest. So what a man can do is establish uh, a contact between himself and the child uh, by using all the things that he has access to starting with social media and 
all other aspects you know that are open to him to reach out to his child because sometimes you know what i can tell you about Filipino law for sure is it says that the uh, under the the family code that you know the situation where the custody of the child has to be decided it's an ongoing situation so it depends on the circumstances so filipinian men can of course file a custody file a, an application in the court Uh, you know when the case has been decided even after that you can still file uh, if there are changes in the circumstances you can still file an application in the court presenting your side of the story that now these circumstances have changed my child really wants to um, live with me so then you have become the voice of the child but this process is very complicated you know because generally men are not aware that they can do this but there is a way of doing it you can have a uh, an attorney do that for you or seek court's help that you want to put this application in case you have any direct evidence showing that your child wants to be with you because generally children do not have rights to go to courts themselves and have their voices heard so that that's that's the problem where we fail our children that's the problem where men fail themselves as fathers but there is a provision under law law is never as it is law is how we use it how we practice it that is what law is and law and justice they are not same either i i keep repeating that law is different justice is different law is different in theory it's totally different in practice mm-hmm. so uh, men should be mindful of all these uh, dimensions of law while they are in uh, these this illusional custodial battles for, for sure. their children and, and- And yeah, and we 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 would actually really really agree with uh, with those kinds of things because mm-hmm. you know not because you place someone in or you put justice into something doesn't mean that you know the law would also uh, I mean sometimes law would normally contradict with mm-hmm. the justice needed yes. in terms of the situation you know and we've actually learned so much I mean in terms of uh, men's rights and you know alienation parental alienation which primarily just all boils down to kids being the victims here yes. of uh, such situation you know it really and affects the child really affects the child mm-hmm. and um we you know for sure uh Filipinos also have learned so much about you know I I think I have to learn more about my laws mm-hmm. my rights my as rights, a man yes. you know in terms of this kind of custody battle mm-hmm. in terms of uh your annulment or your 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 struggles with with your marriage you know mm-hmm. uh it's just that I mean I'm really really happy that we I mean Miss Miss Sally and Attorney Arpo has actually joined us for this evening it's just that we only have like an hour yeah. to, to 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 discuss it and it's it's really unfortunate that you know we we have to cut it short mm-hmm. but uh probably Miss Sally uh and Miss Arpo I could ask just a few uh Probably just a few lines. Last thing that you want to say to our Filipino viewers here, probably the, those for, for those who are also watching there in the UK. Uh, let's start with you, Miss uh, Miss Sally. I'm sorry, Miss Sally. I think you're just on mute. Oh, yeah. Sorry. There, there. Um, we yeah, sorry. Uh, we we believe that that women don't understand some of the stuff that we understand. and we believe that women have hearts as big as a room you know they they have the capability to be balanced you know um and and to be able to hold an environment when there's a lot of contention and, and arguments in there i think we believe also that women just don't know this this information about what it means to be a dad and the only people that can give that to them is dads And and if your show can can help to grow that knowledge, then that's amazing. We would like to know your opinions. We'd really like you to to attach to us on our social media and just just share what you think. Sometimes we talk a lot about men and boys because we feel very passionate about them and we feel passionate about women understanding them. You know, so but hearing your opinion is really important to us. So we're sorry we've talked a great deal today, and we, I, I personally wanted to ask you a lot what you thought about this because we were looking forward to speaking to all of you, three of you in in the studio. So it's unfortunate we haven't had a chance to listen to you, but maybe maybe another time. So yeah. thank you for inviting. Yes. yes. For sure, for sure. And uh probably yes, we we would most likely 
uh, try to invite you again probably sometime mm-hmm. to know more you know about this uh, things that we could talk about anyway because there's this is just an extensive mm-hmm. topic really and it, it, it cannot just be fit in an hour you know yeah. but um, how about you uh, attorney Arp with just probably a few lines or a few words for uh, our reviewers well my parting words for today will be that rights are all about choices and rights are also what we assert them to be. So I, I would suggest and sincerely um, advise all men and women out there to evaluate in themselves whether their assertion of rights is leading us to uh, setting up healthy families, having healthy marriages, having healthy children. So law is what we make it to be like i have said so it's important for all those men to assert their own rights and their own identity as fathers as husbands as brothers or as sons and it's important for women to be flexible and receptive to understand that men and women are supposed to complement each others they are each other they are not supposed to be antagonistic towards each other. God created us as we are, and there must be a purpose in creator's mind. So it's high time we realize that gender battles will leave us nowhere. It's wholesome life, it's love, it's peace and prosperity we all want as human beings. So today is, uh, you know, beginning of the holy month of Ramadan. Today in India, it's beginning of uh, New Year. Hindu New Year. So it's um, nothing to do with religion, but we have so many good things in our culture, religion, in our lives that we must learn to exist peacefully. If we keep fighting these battles against genders, whether against uh, men, whether against women, they are not going to lead us to a healthy generation ahead of us. So live with peace we only have one life and rights are all about choices these are my parting words thank yes. you and it's, it's it's very true i mean mm-hmm. i i fully agree with with everything that miss arpu has actually said earlier you know and uh again i i, I thank miss sally and attorney arpu for joining us this evening for sure we will be inviting you again mm-hmm. here at the show so that we could uh, discuss further uh you know everything that we would like to know more about uh il- parental alienation and you know what what uh, split the difference uk really is you know um how about you uh at the jari any uh last or uh, parting words that you have for our viewers I think it's about maintaining positive positivity, you know, to one another as a parent also. Maintain positive and loving relationship to the child. Because mm-hmm. the, the child should feel the uh, safety and the, the safety and also the stability of uh, their lives. Also, like the impact of the parenting, of the good parenting of both parties. So I think, yeah, it boils down to love as what attorney Arpu had uh, mentioned. Okay. Thank you, Ati Jari. And for me, uh, regarding parental alienation, it, it's really important. No matter what happens, I mean, you guys may bicker at each other. Uh, you magtalo kung gusto nyo. But at the end of each day, you cannot deny the fact that this kid will be your legacy sooner or later. Mm-hmm. So you might want to make sure and make uh, make sure that uh, what you are feeding, what you are actually giving your child is something really important for his growth or her growth mm-hmm. in the future. And uh, yun nga, sabi ko, in, just in Filipino, kahit magtalo kayo, mag-away kayo, kung ano man ang gusto nyo, sa hulit, sa huli pa rin ang importante yung bata. Kung ano yung iniiwan nyo sa kanya, yun yung magiging siya paglaki niya. You know? Yes. And for you, Ari Sophie? Yes, this is for all the parents that is going through um, having pa- parent custody of the children. If you do have hatred to your partner, just set it aside. Do not involve your children, okay? And do not brainwash them and weaponize them against the other parent or to hate them. And especially like what attorney Arpu said, life is all about choices. So be careful. It is very crucial decision for you to be to choose your partner because your partner will be the one who will be with you in raising your children and of course influence them. There are a lot of lessons that you might be able to um teach your child but also your father. The father is 
as much as important to be there. And the uh, children cannot choose their parents, but you can choose your partner. Yes. yes. And men, father, and sons, mother. Yes. And, and because of that, we have yeah. an announcement. <laughs> Again, ang tabayanan bukas, araw ng linggo, Abril at Res, ang muling pagsasahim papawid ng hintilang may todong lakas, DWIC 882, sa pagpapatuloy ng Pilipinas Debates 2022. Kapartner ang Comelec, Vote Pilipinas at CNN Philippines. Panibagong bugso ng paglalatag ng mga reforma, pagtugon sa mga malalaking usapin at pakikipagpalitan ng mga opinyon at saloobin hinggil sa mga pambansin. Sang isyu. Tutukan muli mula mismo sa mga tumatakbong pangulo ng bansa. Abangan, Pilipinas Debates 2022, The Turning Point. Bukas, linggo, Abril at 3, simula alas 7 ng gabi, makakasama natin si Drew Nasino, gayon din si na DWIC Reporters Jopel Peleño, at Tina Nolasco at buong puwersa ng DWIC. Pilipinas Debates 2022, The Turning Point. Live sa Hintilang May Todong Lakas. DWIC 882 at mga kapatid ng Hintilang DWIC at Homer Radio sa iba't ibang panig ng bansa. Yan! Maraming maraming salamat. And again, thank you so much for the legal head of Split the Difference UK, Attorney Arpu Kumar. And of course, the CEO of Split the Difference UK, Miss Sally Ann Buris. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon or ngayong gabi to this evening sa, sa in the Philippines. Thank you so much. I hope you guys are doing really, really good there in the UK. And uh, thank you for your service. Actually, it's a, it really means a lot for, for a family and men and women as well, especially for the children whatever you're doing keep doing a good job I have a, I have a request if you could please ask our lovely audience to sure. check our website once and help us signing that petition because we need massive support for this massive task of you know uh, establishing UN men on lines of UN women so that men and women have equal rights equal choices in all the services and law becomes uh, even for both the genders so i so encourage all of you to visit our amazing. website yeah we think you are amazing we love your show we really think you're amazing so thank you for inviting us Thank you so Thank much. You. And, you. and I think the website of the petition is www.split-difference.com. Yes, visit that and you sign the petition. Yes, for sure. And that would really help them a lot with their advocation. Thank you so much, guys. And just always remember the love lines, voice of the heart ay inihahatid sa inyo ng DWIC 882 at ng Creative Voices Productions. Sa pakipagawa ikipagtulungan niya ng Certified Voice Artist Program, Voice Acting Academy Philippines, Meta Voices Talent and Casting Agency, Dubbing Booth Company, at ng Creative Sound Studios at ng Voice of the Youth Network. Of course, sa pangalan niya na nag-iisang Voice Master ng Pilipinas, walang iba kundi si Sir Pochola de Leon Gonzalez. Muli ako ang inyong voice friend, Kuya RV. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Thank you so much! Yes, thank you so much. And kasama ko ang studio, si na... Ate Sophie <laughs> at Ate Jari. Uh, Maraming right, salamat guys and see you again next Saturday. Yun lang sa Love Lies Voice, Voice of the Heart. Heart. Ikaw ay nanghugot mo sa buhay. Thank you guys. Happy Saturday. Good evening.